how you will absolutely and positively have the certainty of creating something wonderful for yourself, but I have to be very clear. I cannot do it for you. I'm here to help do it with you. I'm here to help encourage you. I'm here to help mentor you through these sessions. I'm here to give you understanding and then give you very deep graphic illustrations so you can see the power of the words as they have performed for companies and get excited. I'm here to open up levels of understanding and um, and business mastery that no one else has ever shared with you. But it is ultimately up to you. So let's keep talking about marketing. But remember, I'm going to give you eight or nine powerful drivers and then I'm going to move you to a whole different set of drivers. But all of these, if you don't understand them before you start, you will underperform the potential of your business and of your life and of your income and of your ability to control that life. So in marketing, first thing is understanding the three ways to grow a business. Next thing is building yourself multiple uh, pillars of access or approach. The next thing is understanding what marketing really is. Marketing is the, it's not some mystical art it's scientifically very easy to understand. The purpose of marketing in whatever form it takes, online, offline, advertising, website, is to, first of all, educate and, um, and illuminate, meaning instruct, but also make aware a target, a preferred target market that has the highest probability of being a buyer to understand three things. One, that they have a problem or they are pursuing an opportunity and you have to get them clear on what it is. And we'll have a, we'll have a session on creating copy, but I'm not going to do it today. I'm just introducing you to the basics. Number two, you have to have them see the advantage of either solving the problem or accomplishing the opportunity. Number three, you have to have them see that you understand them and their problem or their opportunity better than anyone else because you learn to express it better than anyone else. And we'll teach you how to do that when we do our session on preeminence. And then you have to get them motivated to want to seek that, that solution or that achievement. Solution is solving the problem or achievement is gaining the opportunity immediately and only from you. That's what marketing's all about. It's not about being graphically impressive. It's not about complex words. It's about gaining the trust of your market it's about showing your market that the benefit, the advantage, the, the, um, the, the monumental improved outcome that they can expect from doing business with you or letting you take over for them the solution of their problem or the achievement of their goal. It's being able to speak to them in language that no one else has and show them that you understand their objective better than they do by using language patterns that they don't even use themselves. And I'm going to teach you how to do this. I'm, today is not the day. Today is the day you discover the power that has always existed. For example, if you never knew you could plug into electricity to drive all kinds of things, or you never knew you could plug into uh, gasoline to drive engines. You never knew you could get solar and all of a sudden I'm teaching you you have solar, you have electricity, you have you have uh, 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 fuel based, you got you got all these options 
all of a sudden you are in control of your world and I got to continue. So a little bit more on marketing. So marketing is also being seen by your target audience as the only meaningful, viable, and, and most trusted source they could turn to. It's about giving them advice, not just information. And we're going to get deep in this in copywriting. We're going to do copywriting and preeminence together as a module. But it's about having them see you as a source that they can absolutely trust. Now, why is that important? Always remember what I'm about to say because this is equally as true of you as it is of your market and it's true of every human being. That's why you chose this this program and, and why you're, you're trusting me. Human beings are constantly, silently begging to be led. They want someone to lead them to answers, to lead them to solutions, to lead them to ways to uh, to realize opportunities, but they only trust people who they feel have their best interests at heart. This is at the very bedrock, the very foundation of the psychology of the human being. And it's true in Japan, it's true in Singapore, it's true in Los Angeles, New York, London. It's a human distinction. So back to marketing. One of the ways you do that, and we're not going to get deep today, but it is understanding what's called risk reversal. In any interaction between any two individuals or entities, there is always risk. And there usually are two kinds of risk. There is tangible risk. You spend money and you don't get the outcome you want. And there is intangible risk. You make a decision and spend money and you look stupid. Or if it's a big company, you buy software or cloud-based solution and it doesn't work and they mess up your, your, your whole business and, it, and, and, and your business gets blown up. Or if it's hiring the wrong person, you get blamed and you get fired. And so there's always risk in anything we do, including friendship, romance. If you can understand what the most tangible and intangible levels are, of risk are that very probably both consciously and subconsciously occur to your prospective market. And this also applies to growing your career, which will be another bonus section we'll talk about if you decide you don't want to be an entrepreneur. But I would say entrepreneurship is more fun. If you can understand the risks and you can relieve, eliminate, reduce, or totally overcome them for somebody and make it easier to say yes than no, you will enjoy even more of this success-favored outcome that I talked about. You want to make success a more likely outcome than failure. Okay, so marketing has all these cool components. And... I will get deeply into a module on marketing. But remember, this segment is merely showing you where you have what I call enormous upside advantage, upside leverage. By the way, I think I said this in the first module, but maybe I didn't. And if I did, it's worth hearing again. Your job in business is to put the maximum ethical advantage in your hands and move the maximum ethical disadvantage to your competitors or to the alternative competitors. What does that mean? Well, example, if you were selling a supplement for weight loss, your direct competitors are other supplements for weight loss. The alternative competitors are people that sell other means of losing weight. Personal trainers, videos, books, gyms, uh, uh, exercise bikes, uh, 
uh, other equipment. So you have to be able to understand advantage, disadvantage, opportunity, problem solving, both. And this gets into marketing. But I don't want to get deep into marketing, believe it or not. This is just the outer, outer, outer periphery. There's so much to share with you. And we will share it two ways. We'll share it in a module, but we'll share it in a wonderful in a wonderful written uh, uh, book as well. Now, all I'm doing right now is showing you these power principles, these drivers that give you great advantage. The first one is strategy. Second one is marketing. I may not be in the right order. The third one is relationships. We're going to talk about how poorly or how masterfully you use relationships. And this is a huge, vast area of, of opportunity and a very big overlooked area. So let me give you just a few of the areas. And again, I could talk for hours and hours and hours and go very deep on any of these. But what do I mean by relationships? Well, if you, if you don't have a business, the first thing you want to do is figure out who you can access. And access can mean pick their minds as a mentor. It means uh, get them involved as an advisor, an investor. It means partner with them because they have a list. It means get their introduction of you to other people because they have access to your market. There are tons of people organizations, media, experts, uh, uh, influencers that have what you already want, but you can't maximize your ability to harness the power of relationships until you first understand three things. One, what is it you're trying to accomplish? Because without the, the right questions, you'll never get the right answers. What are you trying to accomplish and why? For example, and there's lots of answers to this question, lots of questions. Let's say that you have many things you're trying to accomplish. So you build a list. First thing is you want to find everybody out there who has a product or service or media that reaches the same kind of a prospect or decision maker that you're going to want to reach when you end up starting your business, selling your product or service. Two, you want to go to vendors of those kind of products and see who they know outside of the market you are targeting who do the same thing that might be a good company or individual for you to partner with or to get to mentor you or who's already got a great success formula that you can model and just pay them a license. These vendors might also know salespeople that are uh, unhappy working for their current company and that you could hire full-time or part-time to represent you. You want to find people who have stature to their name. It can be celebrities. It can be people who have a job that nobody even knows their name, but they have incredible uh, importance relative to what you're doing. It can be people who uh, either write articles for media, online, offline. It can be retired people who have great, great resumes, and you want to use them three ways. And when I say use, I mean ethically utilize. You want to see if they'll become advisors to you and let you use their name in your marketing and promotion so you have credibility. You want to see if they'll be advisors to you and give you insights and guidance you don't have. You want to see if they'll be advisors to you and give you access to their networks of relationships. The next thing you want to do is figure out what skill sets, what abilities you have and you don't have. Why? Because you have to play to your strengths and you have to figure out how to either avoid focusing 
or or needing to depend on your non-strengths, not weaknesses, but non-strengths, and find other people who possess the strengths you don't and find ways to get them to help you. There's many ways to do that. And again, I'm just showing you just the outer elements of this. I can go so deep and we will probably on other modules. But for example, you can, let's say you don't know a lot about technology. You can find somebody that does and in exchange for them collaborating with you, give them a share of the revenue that results from your business or give them an equity in your business. Or if they normally would charge $10,000 but you don't have $10,000, pay them twenty or 30000 but pay them as a percentage of the sales that come. You want to get a mastermind alliance. And this is similar but different to advisors. Advisors are people who possess distinction you can use to your marketing advantage along with their expertise and network. Mastermind Alliance is the, the uh, process of going into your community or going into your country or going anywhere in the world and approaching various people who are far more successful in a very broad and, and diverse uh, uh, number of, of fields, industries, commercial, political, sports, and asking them to become part of your mastermind alliance and getting them once a month or once a quarter to spend time together. And if it's local, you can do it in person. If they're all over your country, you can do it by Skype or by whatever. We use Google Hangout, but there's lots of different vehicles. Or if it's if it's all over the world, you can do it by Skype or by conference call or any other device. But you want to tell them what you're doing. You want to tell them how you're doing it. You want to tell them the goals of what you got for your business. And you want them to give you ideas. Ideas about how to do it better. How to do it faster. How to do it safer. How to do it with more effectiveness because these people have been where you are trying to go. And you want to do all this before you even get started. Why? Because by taking advantage of all these drivers, of all these power principles, of all these catapult or springboards that will propel and hurdle your success probability higher, everything you do will perform better. Everything you do will, will be less unsuccessful, and that's your goal. Remember, maximum advantage in your hands, maximum disadvantage in other people's hands. So in terms of relationships, you also want to decide what are your strongest skills. Why do you want to know that? Because you might have within the skill set many different business advantages. Let me give you an example. Let's say your skill set is making and solidifying great relationships, whether you're a salesperson or a networker. Well, you have a lot of choices once you identify that skill. Choice one is to do something as your business that's based on making relationships or selling. Choice two is taking that skill set to another business that doesn't possess it and working out an arrangement where you do that for them, but you don't just get paid a salary or a commission. If you do it successfully enough, you earn ownership in the business. You earn equity. Another approach is to take what you do and find other people that do what you don't do and bring them together for a business. But you can't do any of this until you identify skills and non-skills. Let me continue on relationships because it's really amazing. If you start a business or you can go to anybody's business, if you analyze three things, where they get their buyers, how many different 
me see if I can use the simple terminology. Uh, how many different buying cycles there are within their buyer base? And I'll explain this in a minute. And finally, concentrations of types of buyers that that company doesn't know about, you can help them specialize. Let me give you an example. Most businesses don't have a clue of the following. They don't know what kind of buyers are the most valuable. They don't, uh, they don't know what sources of buyers are the most valuable. They don't track what kind of buyers buy the most often or buy the most things, what buyers are the most profitable. And why is this important? Because all buyers are not equal and do not deserve the same amount of attention or investment. But you can't know until you analyze. Most people don't analyze. And when you analyze the data, and the data means you look at the buyers that a company has. You go to a company and say, I'm going to find you hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars of opportunity you didn't even know exist. And as you're doing this, you're learning how to do it for all kinds of other people. You're learning where you can do it permanently for that company or lots of other companies like it around the country, around the world. But here's what you will find. You will find that certain types of ads or certain types of marketing or certain sources of marketing produce either a higher or a lower quality of buyer. This is very interesting. Certain kinds of marketing may actually produce somebody who's more profitable right away, but that buyer may not buy as many things for as long a time as somebody that came from another source. And if you don't know that, you might think, hey, the buyers from this magazine are great, when in fact they're only great because they make you profit one time, but they don't buy over and over again. Another source of buyer, maybe trade shows, or your blog readers might be less profitable initially, but buy more things more often for longer, but you don't, nobody knows that. Finally, you might have a category of buyer. Maybe for whatever reason, the product or company, or product or service that a company, and I'm assuming you're working with another company because you were talking about starting a business or you're looking at buying someone's business, so you want to analyze this before you buy they may accidentally and unknowingly have a huge number of doctors as their buyers, even though they don't sell to doctors intentionally. Well, if that's the case, you know that that product or service really appeals to doctors. You can start targeting doctors. But this concept of relationship leverage, of maximizing relationships, is profound. It's, it's enormous, and it goes even deeper. You can go to anyone and everyone you know and ask them who they know and then you fill in the blank because it depends on what you're doing. If you're going to start a business from scratch, who they know who would be a good prospective